If you could please find a place to be seated. Uh, and if you, have a, if you don't have a bulletin, they're on the table in the back. We'll begin the service in just a few minutes. Welcome to everyone to this service uh, for Waverly. We're glad that you're here. And I know the family is very happy that uh, you've come to share stories with them and celebrate the life of their dear mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, friend, neighbor. We'll follow the order of service that's in the bulletin and your part is in bold print. And we begin with something called the Thanksgiving for Baptism. And what that means simply is that we give thanks for uh, baptism, for God uh, making Waverly a child of God through baptism, and all that that means 
in one's life. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So if you'll take out the cranberry colored, you know, you can't call it the red hymnal because that was some years ago. So it's this, this hymnal. And if you'll turn, please, to hymn number 773, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Well, I have to say, you get an A-plus for singing. <laughs> you know, I've been a pastor for many years, and often at funerals, nobody sings. Not that they don't want to sing, but I think, you know, sometimes people are reluctant to sing. You're good. You're really good. Thank you for that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister in Christ, Waverly. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call, all creation is gathered into the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings today um, are there before you. And instead of, uh, as it says in the bulletin, instead of saying I'm going to read them and then I'm going to give you a meditation, what I'm going to do is just comment on each one of them and how they relate to 
uh, hopefully to Waverly's life, but also to all of us here today. So the first one is the 23rd Psalm. And uh, I'm sure it's one of those Psalms that many of you probably know by heart. Um, it's a Psalm about the Lord is my shepherd, meaning that the Lord is always with us, taking care of us, providing for us. Um, a great source of comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. So this psalm, which is, you know, millennium old, is still a favorite of people because it talks about God being a shepherd. Now, I have to admit, I've not met many shepherds in my life, true shepherds that, you know, tend sheep. But I think we all have an idea of what they do. And of course, we, as we read the Bible, we know that that was a common uh, vocation of people, that they sent out, uh, sometimes it was the young boys in the, um, family, sometimes it was the young girls, and they tended to the sheep during the day. And the, the sh being a shepherd meant that you had to take care of the sheep and know where they were. And I've always been um, intrigued by that leading me beside still waters. And some years ago, I learned that um, the reason for that phrase is that if sheep got too close to really fast running water, water that was flowing fast, and they they got in that water, they might get, their wool might get so heavy that they would be drowned. And so that was a danger to them. So the shepherd leads them beside still waters, not turbulent waters. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, things in our lives sometimes get chaotic. I fear no evil, it says, because you are with me. You notice how the, the tense of the... Uh, Psalm changes. At the beginning, we're talking about the shepherd as uh, the shepherd, and then all of a sudden, it's you are with me, meaning God, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod was a club to keep away the wild animals and all that would endanger the sheep, and the staff was one of those things with a crook on the end that, you know, if the sheep got too close to the cliff or something, you could just put it around their neck and, and pull them back. So both of those uh, tools were of comfort to the sheep, knowing that the shepherd was taking care of them. Anointing my head with oil, that might mean something to keep the bugs and the um, insects away, but it also is a sign of being a king. Kings were anointed. This is a psalm of David, so David was anointed. So it has a double meaning. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord. Some versions say forever, some say my whole life long. Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy followed Waverly. Goodness and mercy follow us, because the Lord is our shepherd. The second reading is from uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter. I call this the nothing version, or the nothing passage. And uh, I'll comment on it, but see if you can uh, tell why I call it that, the nothing passage. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? 
who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who then is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from God's love. Nothing. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Pretty powerful statement to say that. Nothing can separate us from God's love. There are a lot of things that try, and Paul lists them. You know, rulers, death, uh, angels, power. But nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. Great comfort. Great comfort. The gospel reading is from the 14th chapter of John. And this is Jesus talking to his uh, followers, which means he's talking to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I don't mean to trivialize the gospel. But this morning when I was looking at these passages and thinking about a message, you know what song came to mind? From West Side Story, there is a place for us. And I thought, do I dare even mention that? Because, you know, that's pretty, it is pretty trivial to think about a musical. But that's what, that's what Jesus is saying. There's a place for us. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come back and take you to that place. Today you can think about what Waverly and Walter's place is like. What did they enjoy? What was their biggest joy to, of doing together? That's the kind of place they have with Jesus. And you can think about what your place is going to be like. Because there's a place for us. It's a promise. It's a promise from Jesus. And we can count on those promises. I know that Waverly counted on those promises in her life. And we can count on them too. And for that, I say thanks be to God. Amen. And now we have a piano solo. Patrick.
Claire? <laughs> that way, that way it'll be it'll go over the streaming. Okay. Yeah, just make sure you talk into that. Okay. Gosh, I suppose I suppose I should have done this before Patrick played. <laughs> This is just something I wrote at, um, at work a few days after she passed on the only paper I had available, so. My beautiful grandma passed away two days ago on March 29th. It was morning time and she passed peacefully in her sleep. I'm so glad it was quiet and harmless. She deserved to go in her own time and she took her sweet time. 95 and a half years old, so solid and tenacious the whole way through. My grandma was resolute in everything she did, sure of every piano key, each bowl of chicken noodle soup, every, all right, good night now, at the end of a calm day in Marshfield over Christmas or Easter. Identical days of orange juice first thing in the morning and a glass of milk at dinner. I remember Grandma by the smell of her perfume and her Elizabeth Arden powder, the sound of her shaky singing voice at church, and the old rattle of the screen door knocking against its frame. The sight of her walking down the red dock, always burning hot against bare feet, carrying a tray of Merck's cheese and crackers. I remember her teaching me to knit on the docked pontoon when I was eight, her watching me play piano and saxophone with a steady gaze, and her telling me the story of how she had to take up the oboe to be in band with Grandpa a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma was a solid fixture, the perfect image of a matriarch as she sat upon her throne at the head of the dinner table. A dinner table adorned with dishes she made from memory, trimmed with fancy china as reliable as she was, and perfected with the widely and innately understood truth that she was always in charge. No matter how petite she looked next to others, her presence took up the room. She fed us and bathed us and prayed with us and preached to us, as opinionated as a politician and as eternal as a saint. Sorry. When I think of Grandma, I'll picture her in a matching blouse and cardigan, one leg crossed over the other as she calls across the room to a loved one. I'll think of her crepey, shaky hand gesturing as she tells a story about World War II times. And I'll daydream of her sweet laugh. And now she stood on the driveway watching our minivan pull away. She always wanted us to write letters, so this is my last thank you note. Thank you, and I'll play saxophone for you again someday. I love you, Claire. So what we're going to do now is if you'll look at the back cover of your bulletin and you'll see that um, there's a hymn called Softly and Tenderly Jesus is Calling. We're going to sing that right now. That's hymn number 608. So if you'll open that red hymnal to 608, we'll sing Softly and Tenderly Jesus is Calling.
God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy. Lord, you consoled Mary and Martha in their distress. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Draw near to us who mourn the loss of Waverly. Console us and dry the tears of those who weep. God of mercy. You raise the dead to life and promise new life to those who put their trust in you. Bring Waverly eternal life and the joys of heaven. God of mercy. Waverly was washed in baptism and anointed with your Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. God of mercy. Yeah. Waverly was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the banquet table of your great feast of victory in your heavenly kingdom. God of mercy. Yeah. Grant us grace to entrust Waverly to your never failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy. God of mercy. Yeah. God of all grace. You sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall ever, ever be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Waverly. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Before we uh, do the sending and the recessional hymn, which will be holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, I want to uh, say that Following this service, uh, the family will be going to the cemetery, Hillside Cemetery, where the commingled remains of Walter and Waverly will be buried today in a short a service. Uh, you're invited uh, to go to Hotel Marshfield, which is at the end of Central Avenue, and wait there for the family to come, and then there will be fellowship and lunch and uh, a good time to tell those stories and reminisce. I know that you want to do that because I had to call you together at the beginning here. You were just having such a good time. And that's such a great tribute, I think, to uh, 
Waverly and Walter that, you know, you're here and enjoying yourself because I, I, I know that they would want that. So let us sing um, 413, Holy, Holy, Holy. <laughs> <laughs> 